My name is Michael Brunt, and we're going to be showing a case of a mini laparoscopic cholecystectomy using some three millimeter ports today in a woman with symptomatic gallstones. This shows the outline of the port placement that we're going to use for this operation. The initial access to the abdomen for this case is going to be through a, an infra umbilical transverse incision. We are using an open access technique in which uh, the umbilical fascia will be opened transversely directly into the peritoneal cavity and then we will use a Hassan type cannula uh, to uh, uh, insert and then uh, inflate and put our initial camera port in. So the dissection is carried down to the umbilical fascia and this is elevated with a coker type clamp and then a transverse incision is made with the bovi across the fascia um, using short bursts of energy uh, to get into the preperitoneal space. Once you're in that spot, then you can uh, bluntly enter the peritoneal cavity uh, by a digital dissection, or this can be done with a, a sharp uh, uh, cutting technique with scissors. We then place uh, retractors on either side of the wound and elevate the fascia in the region. And then we're going to put two anchoring sutures of ovicral placed transversely at either end of the fascia. These will be used to secure the Hassan cannula in place. Just hold that right there. I like to take a uh, Kelly type, type clamp, elevate the fascia, uh, so that uh, you decrease the risk of capturing anything intra-abdominal, such as the uh, bowel, while you're placing these transfascial sutures. Cut this. Okay, that's fine. One can see the uh, opening in the fascia into the peritoneal cavity, and then the Hassan cannula is then passed through this opening, and it's secured in place by wrapping the vicral sutures around the uh, suture wings. On the cannula. The next step is to connect the CO2 tubing and inflate the abdomen to a pressure of 15 millimeters of mercury. A laparoscope is then inserted through the cannula and visual inspection of the peritoneal cavity is carried out, which in this case shows an apparent small indirect inguinal hernia in the right side. The patient is then placed in a reverse Trendelenburg type position for placement of the ancillary ports. Local anesthesia with bupivacaine 0.25% is injected, a small stab incision is made, and then a three millimeter port is placed in the lateral right subcostal position under direct visualization. One can now see the gallbladder, which is grasped and elevated. And I like to do this first because it allows me to more precisely place the mid-clavicular port, which will be used for retraction of the neck of the gallbladder. Again, local is infiltrated and a small incision is made, and then the three millimeter port is placed under direct vision. Okay, so Finally, an epigastric port is placed high in the epigastrium in the midline to come in just to the right of the midline so it enters into that uh, preperitoneal fat uh, just to the right of the midline adjacent to the falciform ligament. Alternatively, one could use a 5 millimeter port at this site. Again, inspection is carried out of the peritoneal cavity now that we have ancillary ports in just to examine uh, this small uh, hernia that's in the right inguinal floor. At this point, the gallbladder is elevated and some retraction is placed on some of mental adhesions, which signifies the patient's been having biliary colic type symptoms. And these are divided using uh, an L-hook monopolar electrosurgical instrument. One has to be very careful doing this, short burst of energy, and to be right at the interface between the adhesion and the gallbladder. One can also see in this case that the duodenum is adherent to the gallbladder. Uh, and because of risk of thermal injury to the duodenum, we're going to divide these attachments sharply with the scissors. 
gentle traction is placed on the duodenum because we don't want to have a duodenal serosal tear from the traction. And then these remaining adhesions are divided until the neck of the gallbladder is free and can be elevated away from that. These are relatively avascular, so uh, we can do this with sharp dissection. Uh, the remaining lateral attachments away from the duodenum are again divided with the monopolar L-hook device. Step program. Mike, we talked about that last time. Uh, uh, Scissors, please. And then there are just a few remaining duodenal adhesions that we're going to divide sharply. The neck of the gallbladder is then grasped and retracted laterally and inferiorly to open up the area of the hepatocystic triangle. The L-hook is then used to gently incise the peritoneum and develop this envelope going up uh, along the medial side up towards the liver bed. The gallbladder is then retracted medially to expose the dorsal lateral aspect and the peritoneum there is also gently divided with short bursts of energy to expose the lateral posterior aspect of the neck of the gallbladder. One can already see the uh, cystic artery and you begin to get a sense of the location of the cystic duct as well just lateral to that. At this point a blunt Maryland type dissector is used to gently spread and to open up the tissue planes in the hepatocystic triangle both above uh, the cystic artery and in between the cystic artery and cystic duct. The remaining connective tissue attachments there and small vessels are then divided with the L-hook monopolar device. Spread in there. Maryland? Maryland. One can now see a nice window between the cystic duct and the cystic artery. We further complete this by blunt dissection. And then the neck of the gallbladder is retracted medially again to expose the dorsal lateral aspect and the, uh, these adhesions and uh, connective tissue and peritoneal attachments are then divided by elevating and short bursts of uh, energy with the L-hook to completely uh, open up the hepatocystic triangle and to expose, fully expose the cystic duct and the cystic artery. The gallbladder is then moved back to the anterior view and we divide some of these remaining peritoneal attachments to uh, get the lower part of the gallbladder off the liver bed to expose the lower third of the cystic plate. There are some remaining connective tissue attachments and lymphatics that are in between the cystic duct and cystic artery. Uh, and oftentimes there is a short uh, cystic duct artery branch that comes from the artery over to the cystic duct that has to be divided. One should liberally move the gallbladder back and forth during this part of the operation and then can use a combination of blunt dissection and use of the L-hook monopolar to clean this tissue out. We feel that it's important to obtain the critical view of safety when performing cholecystectomy. The three elements are that there are two and only two structures that are seen to be entering the gallbladder. The hepatocystic triangle is clear of all fat and fibrous tissue, and the lower third of the gallbladder is dissected off the liver bed to expose the cystic plate. You can see that all three criteria will be met here, and we're just cleaning up some of the remaining attachments around the cystic duct itself. Right there. Okay. Yep, right there. Get around that. Lift up. Okay, now let's go back that down. Okay. 
There's just a little bit of remaining fat, fatty tissue on the cystic duct that we're peeling off. And then we will have, um, have reached the critical view. So here, all three elements are met. One of the concepts that we like to promote is an intraoperative timeout, which is a stop point or a check after obtaining the critical view to verify uh, the team by the team members that we have reached this and before clipping or cutting any ductal structures. Now, because we have used three millimeter port in the epigastrium and we have a 10 millimeter reusable clip applier, we move our camera port to the epigastric port using a three millimeter laparoscopic uh, lens. And then we insert the clip applier through our umbilical port. The cystic artery is clipped first with two clips on the stay side and one on the side to be removed and then one clip on the neck of the gallbladder. We then switch back to the 10 millimeter camera at the umbilical port. And now uh, we are going to uh, attempt to do a cholangiogram on this patient. So the cholangiogram is done through the mid collicular port. We make an incision into the cystic duct and you can see bile is coming out of the cystic duct and then we're trying to insert a cholangio catheter in through the cystic duct but there's probably a small valve there that is causing some relative obstruction so we're not able to get it to completely pass we take some micro scissors insert them into the duct spread try to get this to open up a little bit further and milk the cystic duct back up to make sure that there's no stone or debris in the cystic duct. And then we reinsert the cholangio catheter, but it's still not completely passing. So at this point, the decision is made to upsize our three millimeter mid collicator port to five millimeter so we can use a cholangio, cl cholangio clamp type instrument and uh, we have a micro scissors that we insert, spread a little bit more, make one further attempt to insert this catheter and inject, but we're still getting some leakage of saline. And so at this point, it's necessary to um, expose the cystic duct a little bit lower down so we can get past this area where there's a, a valve. So the, the cystic artery is divided to enhance the exposure. And then we're mobilizing a little bit of the fat and fibrous uh, tissue and small vessels off the lower part of the cystic duct a little bit more so that we can um, get access to that area and complete the cholangiogram. It's about to get it's important that the traction be lateral and inferiorly so that it, the, the bile, common bile duct does not get tended up um, along with the traction on the cystic duct. So now that we've done this, we can, uh, again, using the micro scissors, spread and open up this area where uh, this apparent valve was. And then we'll reinsert the cholangio cathetering with the cholangio clamp, slide the catheter through, and this time it passes. And then we secure the clamp around the cystic duct opening and remove our other grasping instruments to do the cholangiogram, which is shown here. So we use a mixture of Conray uh, 60 50 50 with uh, saline. The dye is uh, injected slowly first to see the detail in the cystic duct, which you can see here, and with the contrast going into the duodenum. There's a little bit of overlap of the distal clamp, and so that's positioned so you can see now the entire ductal system. So the uh, cholangia clamp has now been removed, and uh, we're now clipping uh, the cystic duct from the umbilical port site with two clips on the stay side, it's important to make sure these go all the way across. If there is uh, a thickened cystic duct or if there's any distal obstruction or if you've removed a stone from the bile duct, 
our recommendation is to use uh, an uh, OPDS loop suture to secure the cystic duct and avoid cystic duct stump leak. The cystic duct's now been divided, and uh, the last step in the operation is to detach the gallbladder from the liver bed. These peritoneal attachments are divided with the L-hook monopolar instrument. Again, short bursts of energy. Um, and this can be done either by basically painting these adhesions apart or uh, elevating and divided with the hook portion. It's important to flip the gallbladder back and forth side to side in order to optimize exposure and tension on the mesentery of the gallbladder to facilitate its division. So at this point, just a few remaining attachments at the top of the gallbladder. That's divided and the gallbladder is completely free. We elevate the liver, inspect the liver bed, irrigate with saline to make sure there's good hemostasis, that there's no bile leaking, and that our clips are securely in place. Irrigation is uh, aspirated, and now the gallbladder is going to be placed in an entrapment bag for removal. Again, this requires moving our laparoscope to the epigastric port site so that the bag can be inserted through the larger umbilical port. The bag is uh, deployed, and the gallbladder is in brought over and put uh, into the bag, which is then closed and removed at the umbilical port site. This just shows the intraoperative view of that. The suture, uh, sutures in the fascia are taken off of the Hassan cannula. The CO2 is turned off, the cannula is removed, and then the gallbladder and uh, bag are taken out. The abdomen is evacuated of CO2 and all ports are removed and then the remaining opening in the umbilical fascia is closed with a couple of interrupted ovicral sutures. If an umbilical hernia, small umbilical hernia is present, then we would use a non-absorbable suture for this uh, part of the closure. Sutures are tied down and then I like to elevate them and inject local anesthesia into the fascia and skin and subcutaneous tissue at the umbilicus since that's the largest incision and where patients typically would have the most discomfort. And then the sutures are cut and all the skin incisions are closed with an absorbable subcuticular layer and strips. Gallbladder is opened off of the surgical field and you can see in this case that there was a single uh, pigment type stone in the gallbladder. Thank you very much for uh, watching this uh, video and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions.